he, they forgot to worship Yah, you see. Mm, da, 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 those days. Okay, here we go. And they forgot Yah who had created them in the earth. And in those days the Son of Man made images of brass and iron, wood and stone, and they bowed down to serve them. Further validating what we just read in the scripture. Verse 5. And every man made his God, and they bowed down to them. And the sons of men forsook the Most High Yah in all the days of Enosh and his children. And the anger of Yah was kindled on the account of their works and abominations which they did in the earth. And the Most High Yah caused the waters of the river Gihon to overwhelm them, and he destroyed and consumed them, and he destroyed the third part of the earth. And notwithstanding this, the sons of men did not turn from their evil ways, and their hands were not and their hands were yet extended to do the evil in the sight of the Most High Yah. So Yah it's it's funny, man, how Yah gives us warning signs. And I'll just Excuse me, and I'll just give you a modern day example. You know, you could be doing something wrong. You know, you could be profaning the Shabbat or something like that. And while you're out profaning the Shabbat, y'all could cause your tires to go flat. Or say if you was doing something wrong, say if you was smoking weed, and you know smoking weed is wrong because that's akin to witchcraft, because you're altering the state of your mind, you're altering the state of your being, and you leave yourself open to a demonic possession. So say you out out in the streets doing that, and you know about what thus says Yah, you know what's right from wrong, and you out smoking weed, then you get arrested. You see, you get arrested, but then the police let you go. See, Yah has a way of, of showing you, all right, all right, okay. The noose is tightening. Then you're hanging yourself. Stop it. And this is what Yah is doing right here. Yah caused a small series of floods, and Yah has caused famine over you know some portions of the earth. This wasn't the great flood that's to come in the days of Noah. This is just lesser floods, and this is Yah warning humans. But we don't listen. It says that they extended their hand to do evil. Verse seven. And in those days there were neither sowing nor reaping in the earth, and there was no food for the sons of men, and the famine was very great in those days. Verse 8, And the seed which they sowed in those days in the ground became thorns, thistles, and briars. Again, Genesis chapter 3, if you keep on reading, if you read that entire chapter. For in the days of Adam was this declaration concerning the earth of the curse of Yah, which he had cursed, which he cursed on the, which he cursed the earth, I'm sorry, on the account of of the sin which Adam sinned before the Most High Yah. See, that verifies scripture. This is the same, the same thing in Genesis chapter 3. Verse 9. And it was when men continued to rebel and transgress against Yah to corrupt their ways that the earth became also corrupt. And see, we're going to validate this when we go into the book of Enoch, in the book of Enoch chapter 6, 7, and 8, a little bit later on. But now check this out right here. <clears throat> and Enoch lived 90 years and begat Canaan. C-A-I-N-N-A-N, Canaan. Pay attention. Remember Canaan because we're going to go back into the pseudepigrapher and we're going to see what Canaan did just to upset Yah. We're going to read about it here. Then we're going to go into uh, the pseudepigrapher and read it. And you can find Canaan's father in Genesis chapter 10, verses 22 of the Conical Books. See how it all connects? That's how you know when something's true. It's validated. Yeah, Yah took this knowledge from us. You know, Yah took the knowledge of the Hebrew Israelites from the physical Hebrew Israelites. But now, praise be to Yah, we're getting that knowledge back because we're turning back to the Father Yah. You say, the word never left us. It was just our knowledge of it was removed from us. And so now when we come back, like it says in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 1 through 5, when you turn back to Yah, those curses will be lifted. It is then and only then when those curses will be lifted. But let's read about uh, Canaan here. And Canaan grew up, and he was forty years old, and he became a wise and had he became wise and had knowledge and skill and all wisdom. And he reigned over all the sons of men. And he led the sons of men to wisdom and knowledge. Hmm, there's that word again, knowledge. Wisdom and knowledge. It's funny about that word knowledge. Francis L. Bacon, we're gonna learn about this clown a little bit later on in part two of this lesson. But he he lived in about he lived in the 1600s, early 1600s, and he, again by means of astrology, you know, divination and things like that, and fortune telling, he foresaw America and he called America the New Egypt. He was a Mason, you know what I'm saying? He was one of he was in one of those esoteric societies. But I say I bring him up because he coined the term "knowledge is power." And see, that's where they get you. They say, "Oh man, you know, knowledge is power, man. The more you know, the more you grow." Well, if you're learning about dead man's things, you ain't going to grow an inch. 
You ain't gonna grow one iota in the eyesight of God. It's only when you put the, pick these books up and you learn about some truth that you're gonna grow both spiritually and physically. But anyway, I just thought I'd throw that out, throw that out to you guys. For Canaan was a very wise man and had understanding in all wisdom. And with his wisdom, he ruled over spirits and demons. Hmm. He had the power to, uh, to, uh, okay. That sounds like something we're going to read a little bit later. He had the power to, uh, cast a spell and the, and the, and the power to, to conjure up some demons too, huh? Sounds like he was pretty wicked. He was doing some funky stuff. We'll see. Verse 12. And Canaan knew by his wisdom that Yah would destroy the sons of men for having sinned upon the earth and that the Most High Yah would in later days bring upon them the waters of a flood. And in those days Canaan wrote upon tablets of stone what was to take place in a time to come. And he put them in his treasures. So he looked like he was playing Miss Cleo, don't it? Looked like he was trying to tell the future, huh? What did Yah say about that astrology and divination and stuff like that? So you tell me, is that good knowledge or is that, is that that forbidden knowledge? Is that that forbidden fruit that we weren't supposed to eat? Ha! I heard that. Alright, let's go now to, uh, I just want to throw this out here real quick. This is uh, verse 19 and verse 20 again in Jasher chapter 2. It says, For in those days the sons of men began to trespass against Shah and to transgress the commandments which he had commanded Adam to be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. Hmm. Be fruitful and multiply. Let's see where we're going with this. Verse 20. And some of the sons of men caused their wives to drink a draft that would render them barren in order that they might return, retain their figures and whereby their beautiful appearance might not fade. What's that sound like? The sons of men caused their wives to drink a draft that would render them barren in order that they might retain their figures and whereby their beauty and appearance might not fade. Hmm, that sounds to me like they was trying to get them to uh, take birth control, huh? So you can have sex and not uh, go out and fornicate and commit a sin. Fornication is a sin, by the way. When you have sex without a covenant, that's going against Yah's commandments. And it's also going against Yah's commandments by when Yah said, be fruitful and multiply. So you see, brothers and sisters, if you don't want to have a child, don't have sex. If you don't want to catch an STD, don't have sex. If you don't want to deal with the repercussions, don't have sex. You see, the only reason Yah made that available to man and women for us to go out and procreate, for us to go out and be, be fruitful and multiply as Yah had commanded us, there ain't no such thing as casual sex in the kingdom. Ain't no such thing as casual sex in the eyesight of Yah. Ain't no such thing as boyfriend and girlfriend in the eyesight of Yah. You know, what they call it, friends with benefits. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. That's a sin. It's an outright sin, and it goes against what Yah says. So, and so does prophylactics, birth control, condoms, the pill, the diaphragm, the shot, whatever you want to do. What's, what makes that different than going out and getting a shot so you don't get pregnant? What's the difference? i tell you what's the difference. The era in which it's occurring. That happened way back then. This is happening right now. Brothers and sisters, it's a sin. No matter how you want to cut it, no matter how you want to try to chop it up and make it beautiful or nothing like that, it's a sin. And it's wrong. And you will be punished for it. Again, this is volume 2 of the Pseudepigrapha. This is the Jubilees. This is the 8th uh, chapter of Jubilees. And we're only going to read 4 verses in uh, Jubilees. So it's Jubilees chapter 8. Verses 1 through 4. And we're going to dig a little bit deeper on uh, Canaan and see exactly what it was that he did to upset Yah. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it reads, And on the 29th Jubilee, in the first week, at its beginning, Apocryshot, there's the, uh, that name is referenced in Genesis chapter 10, verses 22. So this is where lineage, uh, this is where Canaan's lineage come from. Apocryshot took a wife, and her name was Rashiah, daughter of Susan, daughter of Elam, as a wife, and she bore a son for him in the third year of that week. And he called him Canaan. So there you go right there. That's how this story is tied in to the Conical Books because Arparkashad is referenced in Genesis chapter 10, verses 22, and Arparkashad is the father of 
Canaan, you see. And in Genesis chapter 10, verses 22, that's just going over the lineages, the different, uh, the different sons of uh, Noah. <clears throat> and so here we go. And she bore him a son in the third year that we called him Canaan. And the child grew, and his father taught him writing. And he went forth in order that he might seek a place where he could build a city. And he found a writing which the ancestors engraved on stone. Hmm. The ancestors, his predecessors. He found this stone that they had wrote on. What did they write on it? Let's see. And he read what was in it, and he transcribed it, and he sinned because of what was written in it. Hmm. Okay, well, what was written in it? Let's see. Since there was in it the teachings of the watchers, by which they used to observe the omens of the sun and moon and stars within all the signs of the heaven. And he copied it down, but he did not tell about it, because he feared to tell Noah about it, lest he be angry with him because of it. You see that right there? Huh, that's deep. See, now this is after the flood had happened right here. This is, this is Canaan. This is, this is uh, Noah's like grandson. This is later on. This is the, coming from the sons of Ham, Shem, and Japheth right here. These are Noah's grandsons who we're going to read about in later days when Noah prayed to Yah, praying to bind these troubling spirits of his people. But I read you that because I just wanted to show you that he had got this from his ancestors prior to him, and he knew it was a sin. He knew that astrology and astronomy and all of the workings of the heavens to know that and to use it in ways he knew that that was evil. You see what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with, with, uh, with looking into the heavens and observing the stars. It becomes wrong when you use it to try to tell the future. You use the stars you say, oh, okay, on this date, this date, this date, this astro astro astrological date, I'm going to do this. Like the Egyptians did. Like the Mayans did. And like these modern day astrologers do. See where we're going with this? It's all the same lie. It's all the forbidden knowledge and it's all from, it all comes from the gods. You see what I'm saying? So that's the thing right there. You just have to be careful in what it is that you do. Like we're going to read here later on. Well, I'm not going to get ahead of myself. I'm going to get ahead of myself. But I just wanted to throw that out there. You guys see where we're going with this. Again, this lesson is called The Origin of the Gods, Forbidden Knowledge. Now we're finding out where that forbidden knowledge came from. We figured out where the gods, who these gods were, and who these gods are because they're still here. And then the second part of this lesson, we're going to go to the modern day gods. Now we're just getting the old gods out of the way. So now, with that being said, let's talk about these watchers here. Since we brought up the watchers in the book of Jasher, now we're going to go to the book of Enoch right here. And again, we're going to read Enoch uh, chapters 6, 7, and 8. <clears throat> and we're going to go to uh, chapter 69 as well and go to verses 1 through 12 in chapter 69. But first things first, let's get this going. Let's talk about these watchers, these gods who got men to worship them as gods. In addition to the fallen ones, now let's not get it twisted. The fallen ones and the watchers, they're two different, they're two different sets of angels. The fallen ones came down with Satan. He was that one-third of the heavenly host. They were that one-third of the heavenly host that Satan took down with them. The watchers came a little bit later. The watchers came about when the sons of men were, you know, upon the earth and they had multiplied. And these watchers lusted after these women. I'm going to stop and say this right here. Now... This is nothing chauvinistic, this is nothing lusty, but we have beautiful women. There are beautiful women walking the face of this earth. And I say that to say this, if the beauty of these women could get angels to sin, brothers, you have, you have got to exercise some man, some caution when you're out there in the world. Trust me, I know, I am a man, you know what I'm saying, and I am attracted to women. You know, but because I made a covenant with my wife and because... I know that to lust after women, I know that that is wrong because we're going to read right here in a second. We're going to read what it, what it got these watchers to do. Now, just bear that in mind, man. The woman's beauty was so great that it got these angels to sin. It got these angels to come out of heaven to come down here and have sex with these women. So, brothers, you hey, man. And now it's like ten times worse because you can't even turn on the TV without seeing booty. You can't even turn on the TV without seeing sex. Even in the children's shows, they're advertising sex. This is how far we have come as a people, brothers and sisters. This is how far we have sunk. You know what I'm saying? This is how bad it's gotten. And who is in charge of it? 
Well, it's the, it's the sons of Satan. Obviously, the ruling class society members here on this on this earth who have swore an allegiance to Satan and his followers, meaning the one third of the heavenly host who he brought down here. You know, we we gave over that.